Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU police officer in Kosovo shot dead EU regulators tell Samsung to offer more to end antitrust case European Union politicians want suspension of data sharing deal amid new NSA spying allegations insider dealing and market manipulation plus European Union signals support for military strike against Syria. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. Gunmen shot dead a member of the European Union's police force in Kosovo's Flashpoint Northern Region on Thursday in the first deadly attack on the mission since its creation five years ago. The attack on an EULEX convoy in the region controlled by a majority of ethnic Serbs who reject Kosovo's 2008 declaration of independence comes ahead of November polls and amid EU pressure on Belgrade and Pristina to patch up their differences for accession talks to begin. I highlighted this story because once again we see another aspect of the EU federal superstructure installed by stealth. I've talked in the past about Eurogen 4 and, of course, Europol. The European Union is already so far beyond its remit of an economic trading zone, it is a totalitarian nation-state. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that much of the rules, regulations and directives have been wrong or, indeed, inappropriate. What I am saying is that nobody ever asked us if we wanted this. Nobody ever told us this was the plan. We find that we have a controlling commission of 28 unelected decision makers and we can have no influence of who those people are and they have no manifesto nor can they be held accountable by us. That removes our democratic rights and hands power to an elite few. Friends, that's what frightens me and that is what should frighten you because absolute power corrupts absolutely. European Union regulators have told Samsung Electronics to offer more concessions to settle EU charges that its use of patent lawsuits against rival Apple breached antitrust rules after a first offer fell short. If Samsung fails to allay the European Commission's concerns, it could face a fine of as much as $18.3 billion, or 10% of its 2012 revenue. Samsung and Apple, the world's top two smartphone makers by volume and sales, are locked in patent disputes in at least 10 countries as they vie for control of the lucrative and fast-growing mobile market. European politicians have called for the immediate suspension of a data-sharing agreement between the US and the European Union, following more revelations of spying by the US National Security Agency. The Terrorist Finance Tracking Programme provides the US Treasury with data stored in Europe by the international bank transfer company SWIFT. However, documents leaked by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden and reported by the Washington Post indicate the NSA spied on SWIFT. The company is included in an NSA training manual for new agents on how to target private computer networks, according to the document. In a transparent financial market, it is stressed that accountability must always be recognised in the event of a manipulation in order to maintain market integrity. The report goes on to state that there should be a clear, even if indirect, relationship between any abusive behaviour and a financial instrument. In this way, it should not be required of the competent authorities to demonstrate the direct link between the misconduct of one or more individuals and the end effect on one or more financial instruments. Disseminating false or misleading information via social media sites or unattributable blogs should be treated equally with other more traditional forms of media communication that are deployed in market abuse. Now, friends, what we are watching here is the EU fiscal fat cats getting flummoxed. They know the economies of Europe are bankrupt. 
Many of us know the economies are bankrupt. The only thing keeping them afloat is the manipulation of the bond markets and the peddling of printed fiat money. And as every assimilated Eurocrat knows, when the going gets tough, you call on your legislators to write new rules. Following a meeting of the European Union foreign ministers with US Secretary of State John Kerry in the Latvian capital of Vilnius, the European Union issued a statement supporting the US war preparations against Syria. The EU's representative for foreign affairs, Catherine Ashton, read a statement calling the alleged chemical attacks in Syria a blatant violation of international law, a war crime and a crime against humanity. Without presenting any further evidence, Ashton echoed the Obama administration's claims. I'm recalling this story of 9th of September because it highlights and raises important questions. You'll remember when I covered Baroness Ashton's address on Syria, she used the words, seems to indicate strong evidence that the Assad regime used chemical weapons. Well, it turns out that the UN's independent investigation seems to indicate strong evidence that the rebels used those chemical weapons. Friends, these maniacs are desperate to find an excuse to get involved in a military strike on Syria. They have been trying for almost 18 months to lobby Russia and China at the UN Security Council to allow them to strike that nation. There is also many reports that seems to indicate strong evidence that the Syrian rebels are funded through Saudi Arabia and that the funding is of US origin. And beyond that, Al-Qaeda is involved and there is now emerging many reports and documents to support the argument that Al-Qaeda is connected to the CIA and is being used as a catalyst to initiate a hot war on the ground so that the US can intervene. See Libya and Iraq for examples. In my article from last week, I put forward intelligence that seems to indicate strong evidence that unspoken political agenda is all to do with who gets to install and control a natural gas pipeline that is to be run through Syria. Today in our video library, we take a look at Nigel Farage speaking in the European Parliament. The progress of the UK Independence Party in the UK has been nothing short of phenomenal. Meanwhile, the Lib Lab Con shuffle their boots in the dust with their arms tied behind their backs with the EU red tape. The political class of Europe and Britain have their heads stuck up their bottoms. And whilst they're discussing how dark it is up there, the disenfranchised people of Britain are voting with their feet. But why? What is it in the Lib Lab Con approach that is really missing? Well, I think it's simple, pragmatic common sense. In this video, Nigel Farage is discussing the conflict in Syria. And as he talks, see if, like me, you say to yourself, well, that's what I would say. That is the essence of the problem. The political kleptocrat lunatics have taken over the asylum. They've spent too much time talking shop amongst themselves, or perhaps I should say sticking their heads up their proverbial. The politicians are supposed to work for us. They are supposed to represent us. Syria was a prime example. Almost no one in Britain wanted military action, and the same could be said across Europe. And yet across the Gulf of Brussels, minds immeasurably inferior to ours regarded Syria with envious eyes. And even as I speak, slowly and surely, they are drawing plans against her. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>